Meantime, Maryland's governor is commending the first responders who continue to search for the bodies of those six construction workers who went down with the bridge. On top of low visibility, crews are also dealing with mangled metal in the water. 12 News reporter Sheena Loshudo spoke to the team leader of a local dive and rescue unit who gives us some insight on the tools that make these searches possible, especially in tough conditions. Sheena? Well, in order to be on a dive and rescue team, really a lot of special training is involved. A lot of experience goes into this. So does a lot of special equipment as well. The search ropes that we have actually have communications built in. From the scuba gear to the suit, there's a lot to wear before going under with one piece connecting first responders in the water. This fully encompasses your head. It actually has communications built into it. Through this, you can talk to your team underwater and on the shore. It can be very murky, very dark, and it can be very disorienting. And your mind can play tricks on you when you're in that kind of environment. So to have someone in your ear on shore guiding you and you talking to them is one of the most vital things that we can have. Commander of the Smithfield Dive and Rescue Team, James Grandy Jr. knows the challenges of a water mission firsthand. Thinking of the crews in Baltimore as they continue searching for the bodies of six missing construction workers. It's a massive task to undertake with that situation and that many people in the water and the short time frame that you have to do it. A massive task, but an important one, no matter what community you're serving, which is why Grandy says crews in Maryland are still out there looking. I think the motivating thing for us is bringing closure to families after that rescue benefit has left. Obviously, being able to save someone is always what we hope for. But after that is gone, the, the closure that we're able to bring to families is very important. And it's, uh, it's very rewarding to have seen that firsthand myself. Now, not every fire department here in Rhode Island has a dive team, so Smithfield is often ready to help other cities and towns out as well. Reporting live in Smithfield, I'm Sheena Loshudo, 12 News. The temperature is not making things any easier for the recovery efforts in Baltimore. Sheena Loshudo spoke to a local dive team rescue uh, commander, and he explains just how difficult this task can be. We're told even on a hot summer day here at a local pond, there certainly are a lot of challenges while doing an underwater search. So just imagine how difficult it might be right now for those first responders in Maryland in that cold and deep water. And this also does keep us safe. His official title is firefighter. I've been a firefighter for about 11 years now. But there is much more to the job. We perform underwater search and recovery and search and rescue. It can be as far as a swimmer missing to a vehicle in the water and anything in between. The team commander for the Smithfield Fire Department's dive and rescue, James Grandy Jr., has been under Rhode Island waters on several occasions. And most times, he says, visibility is so bad, first responders have to rely on secondary senses. Honestly, you might as well just have your eyes closed and feel around with your hand. It's, it's it can be that much of a blind search in Baltimore. Maryland's governor confirms those conditions at the site of the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. Six people remain missing. They are down there in, in, in darkness where they can literally see about a foot in front of them. They are trying to navigate mangled metal. To be honest with you, it's kind of a nightmare scenario. A massive task, Grandy says, is no easy one. Thinking of the first responders in the water, giving us a close up look at some of the tools that make those missions possible. The motivation staying the same, whether it be a rescue or a recovery. Like you're seeing in Baltimore today, they're running into entanglements, vehicles in the water, that can potentially come with liquids, contaminants that you don't necessarily want to be exposed to. So here what we have is our public safety hazmat dry suit. This is made of a material that can be easily cleaned afterwards if we are diving in contaminated waters. And Smithfield's dive team is made up of about 12 to 14 people and they often help other fire departments out as well. Reporting live in Smithfield tonight, I'm Sheena Loshudo, 12 News.